Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Hi, I'm Clyde Lowell, and uh, we're at the Cochin County Fair 2012 here, and uh, near North Old Minnesota. And they've uh, I brought in my pedal tractor collection that I've collected on for about the last 20 years, and uh, we've displayed it. We displayed about half of it last year, and now this is the full display here this year. This Minneapolis Moline is a uh, custom UDLX. They've made a hundred of them here. A guy did about 10 years ago. The real one is real highly collectible. They were uh, made so you could farm with them during the day and use them for a car at night to go to town. If They'd go about 40, 50 miles an hour down the highway. And then up here again, we've got some more of the Olivers. My favorite are the little ones that were made in the early 1950s. The little, they were made by the Esca company. You could see as the Olivers progressed, they started with the small Olivers and went up here. This is the later 1950s. Then you get into the early 1960s. These were made and uh, I've had them all restored by a gentleman in uh, Illinois. He was probably one of the best in the hobby at it, and, uh, but he quit now. He's 77 years old and he uh, gave it up, so I'm glad I got as many as I've got 30 some of them restored by him. His name was Tex Gaddicke. This here particular Minneapolis Moline model was the only two-speed pedal tractor ever made. It was called a sh shuttle shift, and you could shift on the go, and it had two sprockets in it, a big one and a small one, and, and uh, it works great. And that's an original tractor that was bought, a guy bought for his daughter in the mid-1950s. She rode it for two years. Then they were uh, stored it up in the attic of their garage, and they brought it back, uh, brought it down in 1998 at an auction sale, in, which I purchased over by Fargo, North Dakota. And this particular Oliver, the purple Oliver, was made to commemorate in the late 50s, they made a real purple Oliver tractor, and that was uh, for plowing demonstrations in Nebraska. They did it to test to see what the uh, horsepower was and what they would pull for plows. And, and when it was all over, they were to be painted the Oliver green and released to the public, sold to the public. Well, some did get out in the Oliver purple, and so there are a few exist to this day, but very few. And then there also there's some that the green paint is chipped off after, uh, that people have got and they can see the purple under there and wonder, a lot of guys wondered what was that purple paint for, but that's the story behind that. Uh. And this particular John Deere is a newer model, I believe it came out last year, this 720. Most all my pedal tractors are die cast aluminum and this is getting away from the aluminum, I guess the price of it is what's driving it and they're going back to the pressed steel and uh, which I'm not real happy with, but that's just the sign of the times uh, to save costs. So this rake is an actual working model. It was made by a fellow in Tennessee. As you can see, it's, they've got cables hooked up to it. It's an actual working model, which most of them are nowadays. They're guys that are, they're geniuses at building equipment are way above me, but they do build some nice stuff now. There's uh, This particular manure spreader was built by a machinist in Wisconsin, the only one he built. So there's, that's the only one of its kind. And it's all a working model. Pretty unique. They made a real John Deere lawnmowers in, uh, the mid 1960s and they were called a patio set and this was uh, spruce blue patio red sunset orange and april yellow and you could get different implements for them uh, lawnmowers rototillers snow blowers a blade each one come with a different thing and i think they were only made for the one year out of a john deere 140 probably in 1965-66 but the pedal tractor they only made the company Ertl company made this green one and I had the, my restorer in Illinois, he wanted to know if I wanted a patio set. So what he did is we bought these uh, green ones and we converted them in. We wrote to the John Deere company to get the exact paint. Restorer was very into detail, so he wanted it exactly. And they are, so that's the exact colors that the real John Deere's were painted. These were custom built too. They were, the real case had a black knight. And then in 1976, to celebrate our 200th anniversary, they come out with a Spirit of 76 case. And, uh, and then the rest of these, these are from like in the 1950s. They've been all restored and, and uh, brought back to the, better than their original. The paint nowadays is so much better than when these were originally made, so they shine a lot better. And, okay, these two represent uh, an old tractor, but they were a new uh, production. They were made within the last 10 years, but they represent the old F-20 farmalls. And, and they're, as you can see, they're not near highly as detailed as the actual ones, pedals that were made back in the 1950s. But they're still a nice, represents a nice old tractor. And then we've got the, as we go on down the line here, we've got the case 
internationals and uh, these are from the 1990s and then these are in the 2000s or these are actual pretty recent productions within the last two or three years case IHs this pedal here is represents uh, the five millionth tractor made by uh, International Harvester Harmall and then uh, that STX 450 was a uh, one of the first eight wheel pedals they made that's uh, duels all the way around so and it oscillates in the middle this isn't big tractor country this is more logging country but this is uh, there's a few local small farmers up in here and and it's uh, we've kind of got a variety of pretty much every brand of pedal that was ever made so If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org. If you have segment ideas pertaining to North Central Minnesota, contact us at legacy at lptv.org. Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund by the vote of the people on November 4, 2008.